Hey everyone, welcome to Malleus Gaming, I'm your host Malleus, and today in Total Tactics, we're going to be taking a look at the famous real-life infantry formation, the Horns of the Bull. This was a tactic developed by the legendary Zulu leader Shaka, and was famously used by Zulu warriors to defeat colonial British forces in the late 1800s. I'll be going over the history of the formation, as well as how to adapt it for use in Total War Warhammer 3. Real quick, before we start, if you enjoy the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends, as it will really help out the channel, and appease the YouTube algorithm gods! Now, let's get to it. Prior to the rise of Shaka within the Zulu tribe, warfare within Southern Africa was a rather low-intensity affair. Groups of men would form a loose mob known as an impi, and battles were typically fought over matters such as cattle raiding, avenging personal slights, or disputes over grazing land. I use the term battle loosely, as these engagements were rather more ritualistic, the men involved meeting at a prearranged place and time, with casualties generally being very light. Warriors would typically be armed with light throwing spears, known as asagai, and small cowhide shields. During these fights, the two sides would taunt each other, the odd one-on-one -on -one fight occurring between warriors and groups making tentative charges to intimidate their opponents. The defeated party would often pay in cattle or lands, ransoming any captives, but mass casualties were a very rare occurrence. Often, the losing party would simply move onto a new grazing area nearby, sometimes even returning to rebuild days later. All this would change with the rise of the Zulu chieftain Shaka in the early 1800s. Shaka rose to prominence under the rule of the, uh, forgive my pronunciation here, Mathethwa leader Dingiswayo, proving to be one of his greatest warriors. Shaka developed his own approach to warfare within his own unit, believing that battle should be brought to a swift and brutal end, eliminating enemies completely. Upon his ascension to ruler, Shaka's methods would broaden in scope and be further built upon. He developed a short stabbing spear called the Ikwa and a larger cowhide shield known as the Isi Langu. Zulu warriors would also possess a hardwood club called the Iwisa for use in combat. The Zulu warriors were trained rigorously, discarding their sandals in order to run barefoot, which enabled them to move faster and improve their stamina. This helped them in their frequent exercises with encirclement tactics. The Zulu fought aggressively, utilizing an offensive pincer formation known as the Impondo Zencomo, or Horns of the Bull. This formation would consist of four different groups of Zulu regiments, the left and right horns, the chest, and the loins. Its overall goal was to encircle the enemy force and overwhelm them from all sides. The left and right horns, or flanks, were used to surround the enemy and was made up of the younger, faster, and less experienced troops. The chest, or central main force, was where the primary offensive would occur and was made up of the elite Zulu regiments. The last section, the loins, was the reserves group and was made up of older veterans. Shaka's reforms would lead to the Zulu kingdom becoming the most powerful force in southern Africa in the early 19th century, and they would prove to be a force to be reckoned with even against the more modern British army in 1879. Now let's see how this can play out. As noted, the Horns of the Bull formation is at its core a simple pincer movement. The concept of flanking isn't new for any player of the Total War games, especially with any faction that makes use of cavalry. This formation does, however, make good use of fast, ambushing shock infantry, and what better faction to showcase that than the Beastmen? Besides, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to use the Horns of the Bull formation with actual bulls. For my initial testing, this formation works wonderfully 
for encircling smaller forces of infantry, and definitely plays to the strengths of the Beastmen. For the purposes of this video though, I'll be demonstrating its use against an equal sized Empire force, which makes use of heavy infantry, cavalry, ranged, and artillery units. The Beastmen will be just using pure melee infantry. And some Minotaurs, of course. Just like in real life, the formation will be made up of four parts. My horns will consist of six units of gores with shields, three units on each flank. My chest has four units of minotaurs with shields, my doombull lord and a wargore hero. I also brought four units of ungore spearmen with shields to serve as a screen for my main units. Lastly, my, uh, loins are made up of four units of bestigores. I should probably get that checked out. Alright, here we go. We got a full Horns of the Bull formation moving out. We even got some bulls with horns in it. We've got Ungor screening my chest here. Uh, some lovely minotaurs with shields. my right horn of gores is moving out they had to get a little bit closer to the enemy force because of a uh, village because of terrain nearby yeah it looks like a little village they're going to be dealing with some Reichsguard on this flank pulling back because they're getting shot not overly too bothered though my main body is moving in, being shot by the mortars. Right, looks like the cavalry is moving in to attack my gores. I'm countercharging and they're pulling away the cowards, the fools. Okay, for some, speaking of fools, for some reason my unit has stopped in front of the enemy army. Okay, there they go. Charging in, and now they're pulling back. This is something you gotta watch out for when you have a control group and set them to charge. For some reason, they start derping out, or they can start derping out, which is what happened here. Uh, I think I separated them and then just started charging in the units by themselves. There we go. Ungors going in, Minotaurs following very quickly behind them. Still getting shot. There they go, Ungors in, Minotaurs charging in right behind them doing that wombo combo. Here comes my reserve, the loins, as well as my lord. Big old somersault, there we go. Love that guy. The reserves are in, Bessigors supporting the Ungors and the Minotaurs. Very heavy push onto the main line. Now let's see what's going on over on the left horn. We've got my... well, one unit of Gors is running away, the two others are fighting Demigriff Knights, which is a not ideal matchup for them. However, they're keeping them kind of pinned, not le letting them get the charge in. I've got some Bestigors flanking these halberds. It appears that the main line of Empire units has pretty much been shattered. My flank over there is a mess. But some Gores fighting some halberds. Two other units of Gores chasing their Reichsguard around. Ideally, these gores would be coming in around the main Empire line and surrounding them, but because of the enemy cavalry, they're not able to do that. Luckily, because they're keeping the cavalry in place, my main units are just running rampant through the Empire. Doing my lord somersaulting through some... looks like Huntsman, I think? Bright blue Huntsman. These crossbows pulling back, they don't want any... any of that beef. 
Minotaur is charging in, just chasing down the fleeing remnants. These halberd units are facing off against uh, some Bestigors, some Ungors, but I am surrounding them with another unit of Bestigors. Checking back in on the left flank. The Demigriffs and the Gores are fighting. The Demigriffs look like they're kind of stuck in these woods, which definitely helps me out. They get some penalties because of their cavalry. Minotaur is charging in again, facing off against, uh, I think, a Witch Hunter. And the rest of my guys are just uh, chilling, cleaning up. These Reichsguard running away from my two units of Gores who are doing surprisingly well. This unit of Gores and this Halver still smacking away at each other. Got a unit of Bessigors chasing those crossbowmen, although I think they might be a little bit too slow to catch up with them. And my lord, going for their lord, he definitely knows how to make an entrance. And their enemy lord does not seem to want anything to do with him. My war gore hero following up. Okay, this is the last real, I so a real combat, I would say. Or somersaulting in. They are wavering. Just punching people. I didn't realize he didn't have a weapon. He's just, like, punching the hell out of people. <laughs> I guess he's got something on his fist, so... Oh my... He just punched that guy so hard he exploded. Oh, I love this Doomble. Last remnants of the Empire fighting for their lives, surrounded on all sides. With a giant bull just jumping through their lines. Many Empire forces scattered. That about looks like the end of that. Victory to the Beastmen. The Beastmen have come out victorious with 538 casualties, or about 39% of their army loss, while the Empire lost 878 troops, or about 73% of their army. Against an army with strong cavalry units, outflanking with infantry can be very difficult, and I didn't quite manage to do so in this battle. However, my flanking forces were able to more or less keep their Reichsguard and Demigriff Knights pinned, which let my main force pretty much shatter the enemy. Minotaurs backed up by Bessigors are fantastic line breakers. My casualties were pretty much limited to my expendable Gore and Ungore units, which I am totally fine with. The Ungors may have been better suited for the Horns due to their ability to remain hidden, but they're also not that strong to begin with anyways. I feel like this formation is great for early game rush factions, or if you don't want to have any expensive cavalry, to keep your army cheaper. While melee cavalry are so much better at outflanking due to their speed and hitting power, I think this can be effectively utilized by fast infantry heavy factions like Beastmen, Slanesh, or even the Skaven. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more content like this, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends, as it will really help out the channel. If you have any feedback, or if there are any particular topics you'd like to see covered, let me know in the comments. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!